So a reminder of the of the schedule. We've got the next presenter coming up soon. I'm not. It should be on, but let me uh, let me walk you through the stuff again. So we've got five more sessions, including a surprise special guest, um, a lot, and some more different styles too. You're going to be seeing some stuff that you haven't seen yet um, through the rest of the day. So hang on there. Um, again. Be good. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Don't do stuff you shouldn't be doing. Check with your doctor, all that good stuff before you do this stuff. And then also, don't do this stuff against people that don't need this stuff being done against them. Or in other words, don't ninja Judy chop anybody that doesn't need Judy chopping. Nobody's trying to get you or your friends or family hurt uh, or anything like that. So that's the liability waiver. Um, and lastly, or almost lastly, remember to mute, you mute your microphones, uh, pin your instructor, so the person you'll look for is probably going to be Kibo Kim, K-I-B-O space K-I-M. Um, if not, we'll have an impromptu discussion and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we will have something for you. But anyway, pin the instructor when they're teaching, ask questions in chat. When there's a, again, when there's a quiet time, please do speak up and ask your questions. I think the, uh, the live interaction is very appreciated. And then turn on closed captions so you can see what's being said. I don't know about the rest of you. I, I tend to mumble and or talk fast, so I apologize for that. But uh, the closed captions help me, so I imagine they'll probably help you if you have the capability. If you're on a computer, you definitely have it in some tablets as well, maybe some phones. So we got Tim Hartman here. He's going to play and share some stuff with us. Uh, and I'm very glad to, that he decided to, to, to jump in and join us once we once he knew I was doing this. So I appreciate it. Um, probably needs no introduction, except he's been doing this decade, decade and a half longer than I have. Uh, and he's lived it day to day. That's, his, that's what he does. So I'll let him do the rest of the introduction. Tim, it's over to you. OK, so uh, my name's Tim Hartman. I do Filipino martial arts. Uh, I was one of the senior students of the late Grandmaster Remy Prices. For those who don't know who I am, I started in Filipino martial arts first and foremost. Um, I started in 1985 under John Bryant. Um, he was he ran the Filipino Karate Academy here in Buffalo, which it's snowing at the moment right now. Go figure. Um, so uh, school's closing down. Professor reached out to me, asked me if I would train with him directly. Of course, that was a no-brainer, and I've been with him ever since. In addition to that, um, the the quick history, uh, in chronological order, as best I can recall, uh, I did Arnis Sikaran. I was a probationary black belt with that, with uh, Bong Hornelis. Um, his life went in a weird, crazy direction with a lot of family commitments. So I don't uh, claim it certification-wise. But I do draw a bunch of material for his curriculum, so I always try to give credit there. Um, in 98, 99, I started training with uh, the late Grandmaster Ernesto Prasis. In 2000, Remy Prasis opened the door for me to work with Ted Buat, who used to teach for Anshan Bacan and was probably the leading authority on the ungrouped methodology of Balintawak, as per the way Anshan taught, because he used to teach for Anshan. Uh, I've also done... Uh, um, and, and now I, I, I hang around a lot with a good friend of Remy's um, and a good friend of ours is Bobby Tablada. So a lot of what the group methodology I take from what he t shows. Um, and then um, I've also done stuff with Nene Tartal in the Dikita Tertia. And I do some Bondo um, with uh, Dr. Mangji. So when I teach, uh, I, I can isolate what I'm teaching. or But usually what I just do is have my way about me, my blend. But when people ask me about Balintwak or Combatan or whatever, I can take that out of what I'm doing. So today, everyone's been doing a lot of different techniques. Uh, I'll, I'll teach a couple things. But one of the things I want to talk about is, especially with the social distancing and stuff like that, how to solo train. Now, I've been very fortunate. This is my school. Um, real quickly, it is a 5,000 square foot facility dedicated to Filipino martial arts. We're in the process of getting stuff done i even though we are shut down i come here on a daily basis and i get to use do this as my think tank unfortunately as filipino martial artists we are the ugly stepchildren of the martial art world no one makes gear for us we have to make all of our own gear so uh, what i'm going to do is show how we can use different things like heavy bags which could be a straight pole 
a tree or whatever. Uh, if you have a bob, I'm going to show you what you can do with that. I am going to do some techniques and such. Um, and I uh, also want to talk about if we're teaching, for those who are teaching electronically, uh, do your best to do left hand. Because when we see things here, if I do my right hand and someone tries to mirror me, it throws them all off. So a lot of times when I'm doing like the angles of attack, I will use my left hand um, to do all my stuff. When I'm doing my forms, everything, and uh, you know, we try to do both in modern, but we don't always get the opportunity to do that. So, um, so right off the bat, let's start off with something nice and easy. Um, we're gonna work on. Uh, how to do uh, our block check counter. So this is my friend, Bob. And just recently I was thinking about working with him. Now, usually I put a shirt on him to, to promote the brand, but the thing when we do Filipino martial arts, you know, we have tape on our sticks. The question is, why do we have tape on our sticks? And we can sit there, it says it identifies this stuff and all this other stuff, but really we're too cheap to buy new sticks. We tape them up because they get beat up. Uh, and it's hard to find good sticks out there, which is why I make my own. So if I take black tape stick and hit Bob, it leaves marks all up and down Bob. So what's one of the reasons why I do the T-shirt? But what I can do now, if Bob doesn't have arms, which Bob doesn't, what I could just do is put through my T-shirt in one sleeve and out the other a longer stick. It could be a broom stick. It could be anything. Um, now I have an arm or a stick to deal with. So. When we're doing things like, uh, and I was watching, I was watching Mosey doing all of his, his uh, Ponatukan combatives. So this now can give you something to work on when we're doing stuff. Okay, now it, all you need is a hunk of wood to tie to a tree or something, duct tape it, whatever you got to do, bungee. Uh, you know, as Filipino martial arts, we, what, we, what we called this is barn jobbing things. Whatever it takes to put it together is what we do. Now, I'm going to start off with the fundamentals. Now, when I face you, I'll probably do a lot of my left-hand techniques. Um, but I'm a righty, just like Professor Price is. If you watch him, he did everything right-handed for teaching. He was a lefty. So um, what I'm going to start off with is something nice and easy, block check counter. How do we train that when we don't have a partner? Because that's really what we're talking about. We're all on lockdown. That's why we're doing this virtual seminar. So um, with this... So we, we call it block check counter. You know, we go inward and outward blocking. We have three blocks. We have the unbraced, which is a one hand. We have a brace, which is reinforced. And we have our dos manos for heavy weapons. We do all three because we don't know the energy level. If someone's sparring, they're not really committing a lot. So you do a lot of one-handed blocks, which is a, like one of the trademarks in Balintwa because it's stick dueling. It's not heavy weapons follow through strikes. You start... But if we're talking about real combat, and I'm talking about what you'll see in the street, someone's not swinging a hunk of rattan, they're swinging a baseball bat at you, a tire iron, a two by four, and an unbraced block like this is gonna smash. Now, if you're that good, by all means, go for it. But I'm teaching for my beginner students who don't have that skill set. And you know, I'm 55 as of the other day. Um, my skill sets are gonna start deteriorating so I want to, if I'm dealing with some young guy, I want to make sure I have a strong block to protect myself. So the block check counter, we're going to start off with. Nice and easy. What I'm going to do is obviously the stick isn't going to be swinging. I'm going to do my unbrace. What I'm going to do is here, I go one, two, three, and I hit that leg. Why? Because no one blocks the leg. What I'm thinking about is something that is going to hurt someone in the street. Okay, I want to hit a muscle region that's going to cause a spasm, knock them down, but I don't want to break anything because there's also the legal aspect of things we need to worry about. So I go one, two, three, and the other side I go outward block, one, two, three. I can use my triangular footwork as I go. Now, if we don't have a stick or something to work off of, what we have to do is envision that in front of us. I step offline, I block, I grab, I hit. Now, what's the key part of this? We want to make sure that we put this tool in a clear, safe path. So this is a stick. It's not as much of a deep, big deal. But what if you have a, a blade with you? 
You could be doing yard work, have a machete. So what I see a lot in stick work, because it doesn't matter, I'll see one here, grab up, then people go up this way. Well, what happens? They cut themselves. So I always think that I could have an edge weapon in my hand. So if I go like that, I mean, then I'm walking around one arm. Right, John? You know what I'm talking about. So what I want to do is go here. I got my helper here with me today. Right, here. Get out of here. So I go block. If I grab high, that means my target has to be underneath my arm. If I grab low, that means my target has to be above. So if I'm working something, like Bob, I would do a, a flat edge block and grab here. If I grab and put it up here, I'm going this side. Now, afterwards, I can do all these other things. But on my initial path, that's what I want to do. So, one, two, three, or one, two, three. That's on the inward. On the outward, it's one, two, three, one, two, three. So, the rule of thumb, if the weapon's on top, that means the target needs to be up on top. If the weapon is below your arm, then the target should be below the arm. That way, no matter what tool we're using on that initial pass, we're not worried whether it's a stick, a blade, a hammer, something with a, a back end on this that can actually get caught up and hurt ourselves. You know, they're already trying to hurt us, so we don't need to work, help them any. Okay, so from there, we would add extra stuff. Now, um, what I'm going to work on normally what we do is we work on the defensive portion of things. So someone attacks you and we block and we hit. Well, right now we don't have that because a lot of us are training in, in isolation. Okay, so how do we train for something that we don't have? So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my bot. Okay, so I'm going to do my block check counter, but in an offensive thing. Okay, so um, what I want to do is thinking that this person is going to block. So what I want to actually, I'm going to, I'm going to use someone for visualization. Visualization, Janice, can I borrow you for a minute? Did you hear me, Janice? Okay, so Janice does not like being filmed. So we'll have to put the blood, the fuzzy thing over her face tie. It'll be like the CIA type thing. Okay. So normally, what happens is that her uh, her helper sort of rock. It gets in the way here. All right. So she swings at me here. I would block. I would grab. I would hit. Okay. But what I want to see the mindset is why am I waiting for that? So I'm going to swing and attack her here. She does the block. I'm going to push this back and then I can do my hitting afterwards. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two, three. Now I could go through or I could rechamber. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. That's what we're going to replicate on the bag over here. Okay, so now once again, this could be a tree. This could be a metal pole in your basement, although if it is, make sure you wrap it because it's going to be very loud. And if you have a significant other, he or she may not like you much after that. If you're in an apartment and you have a shared basement, you don't want to get evicted. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of things here on that, that you want to worry about. So right here, what I'm going to do is work on offensive block check counter. So I swing the hit. They, if they if they don't block, I just go to my next thing. It's not a big deal. But I'm going to go with the mindset, what if they block? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to put my hand out, and I can strike low from there. I can go here, push the stick back, and strike low from there. Now, there's a couple reasons why I like striking low, one of which people don't block their legs. I mean, look at tie boxing. You kick someone in the leg, they can't stand, they fall down. The other thing is that my hand is high. And I don't want to put my weapon in the same zone as part of my body. So, if I block, I check, and I push through, my, I have to go below my arm to hit. Boom. Now, afterwards, we can do all this other stuff. That's up to you. But for the initial thing, how do we train this? You know, I'm going to go one. I can push that stick back into them, which now gets me in this position, and I can hit down low. Or I've got that follow through check and hit okay so in the air we would go one push that in two three now 
Let's tie this into something else. Stick and dagger. So this is it's about mindset, about chaining outside the box. Um, so I love the internet. I love the fact that there's a lot of footage of com of combat out there. Uh, long as it's censored for people who who are who don't like the children, we don't want to keep them seeing this kind of stuff. But generally, you don't see multiple weapon fighting out there. You'll see the most I've seen usually. Uh, the fights are really probably in South America or in Africa. They'll take something like a backpack or a shirt, they'll wrap it around their hand, and they'll have their knife, and they'll use as a shield. But I usually, I have yet to see, I'm not saying it's not done, but we're talking about modern-day combat. I have yet to see multiple weapon fighting. So the question here is, why do we do multiple weapon training? Okay, if it's not going to be done in the real world. It's not fantasy, it's attribute building. So one, we're working about coordination so we don't hit or stab each other. We're working on becoming ambidextrous, equally proficient with our weak hand as our strong hand. But more importantly, when you put a weapon in someone's hand, they will use it, which to me, it means it's about getting the live hand in there. We do a lot of fighting in our club. I've had a lot of people come in over the years and for those who come very experienced karate or taekwondo or whatever, they start stick fighting, they think only about the stick. They don't use the live hand. I put a foam dagger in their hand or something, now they start stabbing. Now, if I can get in there and hit and punch or check with this live hand, this is why we do these things. So if you want, if your range is off, we start with a dagger on this. So I'm going to go one check and or stab and then hit. I can do the backhand block check stab or I hit you know like I said I was initially going here to push the hand back but why can't I just go here and stab the person so the mindset is to use that same gross motion for multiple applications okay so hit pop hit pop or we go here So uh, two things. How do we feel on that? And Ty, what's my time looking like? Because I didn't see what time I started. So actually, I'm going to go to the discussion thing because I, it's over there and I have it up there. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I think you started about uh, eight or nine or ten after. So I was thinking, uh, or sorry, yeah, after the half hour. So thinking to go until ten after three. Ten after three. Okay, got fifteen minutes. Good, good, good. Okay. So uh, how do we feel on that overall? Is there any issues, questions, statements? I know there's 63 of us, so it's hard to go through. All right, so no one has anything there. All right. Oh, feeling good. All right, Lou. That's cool. I got a little interaction there. So let's do how we train some Sinwalis when we don't have a partner. Now, I did a seminar last week. Uh, there's a couple of you who are there already. So this is going to be moving a little. We're going to review what we did the other week. So if for those who haven't been here, you're going to learn something new from me. If you were there last week, it's it's review time. So, all right. Um, so in our Praces program, we only do four Sinwalis, but there's multiple variations of every Sinwali. We do the four corners. We do the single Sinwali. We do the double and all the variations. And then we do the X. So um, we're going to put some things together. And how to do your Sinwalis when you don't have a partner tree pole heavy bag so we're gonna go over new we'll do a different sin wally um so right off the bat um uh, we'll start off with the basic high high low low so in our counting at the end of the day it doesn't matter the counting system you do you're gonna do with a sin wally you do an x movement okay you can't go horizontal because the hands will hit or you'll miss completely we do x high we do x low so this is High forehand, low forehand. Now facing me, I'm going to do it the, the way I would normal because we, we match right to right and then left to left. Right to right, left to left. Okay? Footwork's unimportant because we're working on getting that upper body isolation. I, I just like moving around. And generally, like when you're doing the modern, we pretty much just move around with our partner. First, we check range and go from there. Okay, 
So I think uh, some of the other systems would call that cop cop or something like that. Um, it's four corners. Okay. So what we're going to do is our single sim wallet. So now that is a high forehand and a low backhand. High forehand, low backhand. So when I teach, you know, so it's here and here. All right. Now, part of this is teaching. So when you're teaching people who haven't done it, and uh, I teach men, women, and children, high five, low five. High five, low five. Now, a teaching tip. And, of course, I put everything away. So hold on. What I will do, because people can't figure their left and right out, you know, not at high speed. You know, I sit there and say, all right, figure your left out, and, they, ah, and then people bring the wrong hand. So go like this, pull the hands apart, and the one that makes the letter L is your left hand. Okay. But during the Sinwali, what we're going to do, yeah, vet, vet we're going to get into X Sinwali. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> so um, no problem. All right, but right now, what I would do is I would give a, a padded stick in one hand and a rattan stick in another. Sometimes I've got blue and red. If you're colorblind, I can't tell you or I can't help you with that. But what I can do, at least, is we can have different substances. So wooden stick, padded stick. All right. So we go high, high, low, low. Okay. So I had a request on the X and Wally. We're going to do that. X and Wally is a derivative. Part of it is a derivative of Singleson Wally. So let's go over the Singleson Wally first. We talked about it. We talked about the high five, low five. We'll do this again. So I'm going to go high, low, high, low. It's a, it's one of the more common Sinwalis. Now, here's what you got to remember. Let me see who knows this. Okay. What do we strike? What is a Sinwali? I'm going to give you the answer now because we only have a half hour. Actually, I got less than that. A Sinwali is a striking pattern. So then I ask people, what do you strike with? And, of course, they say the sticks. But that's not really the ultimate answer. The ultimate answer are the angles of attack. Jeremy, you did the seminar last week. You're cheating, you bastard. But that's 100% right. What happens a lot is you'll see this windshield wiper movement when you're doing Sinwalis. And people go like this. That is not any of the angles of it. I strike forward. I strike here and here. So we need to make sure we have range out and here, out and here. So why does that windshield wiper happen? Well, if you have a, a facility to train in, you got ten. If you get ten people with three foot arms and two foot sticks, you run out of room real fast. So everyone tightens up their motion. Like we're doing the the four corners. Everyone thinks you're Velociraptor because you have no arms. So we always have to make sure we check check our range by seeing the stick and hit the hand. So long range, you can hit your opponent's hand. So right now, Bob Bob can hit my hand. So that means he's at long range. If he can hit my body, he's at medium range. And if we can punch each other or puno each other, that's your short range. And it's all different based on the length of your weapon. So um, we need to check our range first to make sure we have good, good te techniques there. So now we want to do the angles of attack. So there's one and two, which is the high X for us, three and four. I do a modified angles for beginners because they don't need to know all the pokes because they don't understand them. I just go high, X, middle is horizontal, and then I do low X. So I get all the ranges. It's forehand and backhand. Makes things look good. Okay. Ty doesn't look so big sitting down. That's funny. <laughs> all right. So now we did the single Sinwali. So now we're going to start doing the X Sinwali. So X and Wally comes from Ernesto Prasis, or let me rephrase that. X and Wally, my learning of X and Wally comes from Combatan, although I've been told it came from somewhere else first. Don't know, don't really care. I have fun doing it. There are multiple, this is the, for Combatan, it's their version of Heaven Six now, or the double and Wally. Now in, in double, we do the high, low, high, the all high, the all low, mathematically, if you change all the different positions, there's 64 different ways. X and Wally does the same thing, not 64 different ways. I'm not a math guy. Ty could probably tell you what the numbers are. Uh, I don't do that. I'm sorry. 
I'm a caveman. I beat people with sticks. That's my thing, you know. So what we're going to do is the single Sinawali we just got done doing. But and normally what we do is we do all right and we do all left. What we're going to do is thread these together. So to do the X Sinawali, I go one, one, because those are my right angle left ones. And then I do six and six. Okay, or high forehand, high forehand, low backhand, low backhand. Now, in when you're doing like the um, the heaven and earth and all those variations, there's a right side and a left side. This doesn't do that. This always starts right. There is not a right quote unquote chamber. Now, my three chambers are open, closed, and side. So this one starts from that open chamber. So I draw an X in the air. Here's the high X. Then I do the low X. Okay, I do my high X. I'm back to my open guard. Oh, I'm in my closed position. Now the key to this, don't put your hand here because now I'm locked up. Keep it on that shoulder so I can go low and then low. So high, high, low, low. We're gonna do the four primary versions of this. So on the bag, high, high, low, low, high, high. So I'm going to continue using the, the blue stick in my left hand so we can have that whole idea of hand. So, But once again, it's high, high, low, low. Now, that's the first one I teach. Now, just like the heaven and earth variations, what we call double, you can do all four high. So we go, and I'm going to do the four primaries. So now we do high, high, and then backhand high and high. So X, close the X. Open the X. Give yourself a hug, then unhug. Whatever it takes mentally to get through. But I go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now, to me, I start with the I start with this X, the high low X, because it's the single sin wally my students have already done. They've got it in their motor memory. So all I have to do now, instead of going right, right, I go right, left, right, left. So I keep that. So then, then we take it all high. High, 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 high. Okay. Now, the next two are not as comfortable, and those are the lows. Now, this is what I talked about. Think about it. When you do earth or reverse, if you get a sore back, you're doing this wrong. Okay. It's the angles of attack. When I do the angles of attack, I don't bend down to hit. What I do is bend my knees like a box. When you lift a box, we bend. We should be bending at our knees, not with our back. So if I want to hit the angles, you know, so this is my five, this is my six. I didn't bend over for that. So why in a Sin Wally would I do this and go, ah, and then at 55, it gets old real. I mean, I could just say I'm working my back muscles, but, you know, I, no, not the case. So when we're doing this, the low X, it's the same way. Keep your posture up. I go low, 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 low. Nice and easy. All low. I keep my posture. I don't have to bend over, and my back is not sore. If I'm doing the reverse sin wally, same thing. Now, like I said, if I want to bend something, I bend my knees. Now, do I lean forward a little? Of course I do. Okay. But I'm not bending over here and feeling it in my back later. Okay, so we got the all high, we got the high low, we got all low. So what's the next one? Low, low, high, high. Low, low, high, high. Okay, nice and easy. But here's what I look at when I'm doing any of my stick work, any of my stick work. I'm going to hit you on the right side. I'm going to hit you on the left side. I'm going to hit you in the front. I'm going to hit you on the top of the head. Those are your primaries. Whether it's a, whether it's high, middle, low, eh, who cares? I mean, obviously, we need to know for safety. But you're either going to hit me on this side of my body or this side of my body. Hit me in the front or pop me on the top of the head. Very, very advanced. Might be come from underneath more unique situations than anything else but once again megan do you have sticks there we go 
See, I'm old, but I still got an eye that works. <laughs> All right. So, and then I'm going to put my message back up there. Okay, there we go. Now, so let's do this from the beginning. So we would go all high. One, two, three, four. Now we go high, low. One, two, three, four. Now we do all low. One, two, three, four. And then low to high. One, two, three, four. Okay, so high. High, low. All low. And then low to high. All high. High, low. All low. And then low, high. All right, do I have a quick moment to do um, an open hand interpretation of it? Sure, let's do that. Okay, let me just wrap this up with this. So, my Sin Wally starts with my right. So, normally, when I'm okay, so as Filipino martial artists, we have a tendency of doing things backwards, which means we have a tendency of fighting with our right hand in front because we're so used to fighting with our weapon. Okay? So, at time, everyone else seems to fight. You know, standard fighting is strong side back. More importantly, if you're carrying a weapon for self protection of your job or whatever, you keep your weapon system away from your opponent. Okay? So when I do my open hand combat, a lot of times when I do the transition, I do a weapon side forward because we just got done doing this one. I'm going to make sure I have my left foot in front, my rear, my right hand in back. So what's going to happen is we're going to do the all high. We're going to do a physical application of that Sinwali. Just the, just the first four moves. So person's going to throw a jab cross at you, okay? The one, two. That's what's coming in your face. So they throw the left hip punch. You're going to take your rear hand and deflect that. So the punch comes in here. I deflect. I should be on the outside line. The, the cross comes in. I'm going to be on the outside line. So it's one, two. All right. So this punch is coming to you. You're going to take your, let's see, you're going to take your right hand and parry my punch this way. Boom. Now here comes that other punch. You're going to parry it the other way. Now, when we did the Sinwali, open guard, and then we did the close guard, right? Well, if we do the parry, I deflect here, I deflect here. My hands are crossed. So my right hand chops the neck, my left hand chops the neck, and then I shield. And then I'm going to do other things afterwards. I'm not worried about all that. I'm worried about just the X motion. Here, here's the cool thing about what Professor did. Professor Price has taught it as the art within your art. He did it as a standalone program, how I learned, and the art within your art. I'm going to show you how to use this as an entry, and then from there, you finish the way that you feel comfortable doing based on your training style. So once again, the jab cross is coming your way. So the jab comes in. We all take our right hand. Oh, actually, I'll do it backwards. We all take our right hand and parry that punch and keep it up here because we just got up there. Another punch comes in, so you parry with the other hand. While that's happening, we take that first hand, the right hand, and chop their neck. Then we chop with the other hand. Now, since I'm so close, I'm going to shield. So if Bob, because he doesn't have two hands, what I'm going to do, punch comes in and go one, two, chop, chop here. And then there's other things I can do in this position. The chop is hitting the neck. This is the brachial plexus nerve in the neck. This is law enforcement tactics. It's medical science. It is not this... Ooh, Crocodile Dundee and Xena Warrior Princess, for those who are old enough to understand this stuff. This stuff works. Uh, a couple of us here go down to the Virginia Police Academy and teach teach uh, their – this is stuff that's taught. The, the brachial stun is taught in the academies. Um, so hitting right along the side, the brachial is where you're going to you do a forearm shot right to the neck. So I go with my right one, two – while I'm doing the second parry, I'm chopping just like we're doing the Sinwali. I do the other Sinwali. And now since I'm this close, I bring the hand up here in case another punch comes from here. Now, I got some Silat-ish type stuff that we do from there with takedowns and stuff like that. I really would need a body here to show that. So let's do that three times together and we'll wrap it up. So 
Punch comes in. Okay, so here, they, start with the right hand. X, 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 X. This is our Sinwali. Okay. Now punch comes in. One, two. Chop, chop, shield. Okay, now my shield is my brace block. We talked about that before. I reinforce my block with my hand. I reinforce it with my head. All right, second time. Here we go. One, two, three, four, shield. One last time. One, two, three, four, shield. Okay. That's what we're doing, or that was it. Um, I know the schedule got a little off, but that's okay, because Master Ty knows how to uh, fix things. Yep, we're just uh, shuffling for 15 minutes, and then I'll fill in a 15-minute hole before uh, before four. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> uh, so quick, uh, quickly, anybody got any questions for Tim? The uh, speak up, or I can transfer some questions for you, whichever we want. He can see them, so he's got a whole big TV there, so he can see all your stuff. If you want to, do I, yeah, I, I got, a, I got a thirty-two incher. I put the fifty away. It was the resolution's low. All right. But, okay. So um, while while people are doing that, teaching methods, angles too. Okay, great. Thanks, Eric. All right. So uh, if anyone's interested, if you look up on YouTube, Tim Hartman, you will find Dodgers Corner Playlist and the Modern Arnie's Minutes. Those are free lessons up there. I also have the Modern Arnie's University, which is actually a, a paid for thing. Um, I, I'm here out of Buffalo, New York. I'm 30 minutes south of Niagara Falls. So if anyone's coming up this way, by all means, stop by. Um, this is what I do for a living, which sucks right now because we're all on lockdown. Uh, but I'm doing a lot of remote training. For those who are doing remote teaching, think about doing things left-handed for your students when you can, okay? Um, I use Google Meet. Ty uses Google Meet. There's also Zoom out there. There's other ways to do it as well. Um, so Tim Hartman, uh, Datu Tim Hartman. You go datuhartman.com or... If you go to the World Monterey Alliance, that's the organization I run. That is there. So um, any other questions there? All right. So all right. So thank you very much, everybody. Hey, Badger. <laughs> I didn't see you before. You just and uh, PG Ty, I'll turn this over to you. Appreciate it. No, thank you so much. Thanks for uh, stepping up, sir. I definitely appreciate that. We moved around. We, we overcame difficulties like we are doing. Um, anyway, much appreciated. That was awesome. Very good. Got it. So we have people with uh, relatively little experience and people with decades of experience, but we're all here together playing and sharing, and that's that's what I really like. Um, so anyway, again, thank you, Dr. Tim. Appreciate it a lot. Um, and also, no, no problem. You. Anytime. And uh, if you need to get a hold of me, Dr. Tim at gmail.com. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and chime in when I post for you too. You can, if there's anything else you want people to have on links, uh, you'll see that post because I'll tag you because you like that. Uh, yeah, this one, yeah, because it's relevant. Exactly. If you haven't looked at my Facebook page, you know, actually look at Paulo because he's. <laughs> That's right. That's